yesterday for, for, for crypto in general as, as Bitcoin flew above 18,000 um, and really blowing away everyone's expectations. Actually, a lot of people in crypto expected this big run between 14,000 and about 18, given such little price volume back in 2017 between those two price points. Um, so this was actually, it's kind of playing out how people expected. People did expect this to, once we broke 12, once we broke 13, especially once we broke 14, people did expect to run up too near the all-time highs um, from 2017. So that narrative of um, minimal uh, minimal transaction volume between 14,000 and 17,000. Morning, Ian. That, that narrative of minimal price volume between 14 and 17 or 18,000 turned out to be, in my opinion, pretty accurate. Um, so it was a pretty good call by, by kind of crypto analysts in that it's kind of coming true. So we're back crypto mapping today while everyone else is busy talking about BTC, lets us hone in on um, kind of additional coins in the future. Um, and now we're gonna make it, start making it look good. If anybody does wanna, morning Swanji, morning everyone. If anybody does wanna work on the on the map, where um, we're gonna be, gonna be horizontal line conscious and um, vertical line, we don't, vertical lines we don't care about. And then if I zoom out, I actually, I actually put, um, there it is, there's our full map. Um, I've taken, oops, I've taken DAOs, the dot ecosystem, NFTs and everything and put them up there, up the top. Um, and really we just probably got a lot of cleanup today and Morning Cave and throw in any organizations that I don't have on here and we'll continue to add. It's just everyone probably probably should just dive into layers. I can I can take care of layer one and make it look good um, later. Uh, we should probably dive into layer four and continue to map out all of our DApps because that's where most of our activity is in crypto. Probably the biggest project too. So if we come up here, I've started with our wallets and our DEXs. So. And it's pretty interesting that Ethereum didn't run up above 500. Um, someone made a pretty good point yesterday um, that incumbents, uh, people, you know, legacy companies might be more open to Bitcoin rather than Ethereum, given that there's payment rails that are going to be built on top of Bitcoin, you know, the Lightning Network. Um, so legacy businesses, there was an argument that was made that legacy businesses can still operate um, pretty, efficient, pretty, pretty well with Bitcoin. While with Ethereum, if you actually, if Ethereum does achieve its mission, we're almost creating a new payment layer, um, where thereby replacing potential incumbents. Added heavy core yesterday, Squanchy. Or today, only one of the coins I like that didn't pump. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Um, and there, we got all of these different um, industries down here that we can break out. Our supply chain list isn't good enough. And it seems to be that uh, Core just continues to innovate and continue. It's funny, they, they're one of the few, actually one of the only tokens that I know that absorbs their forks. So everybody, you know, if you're a good, if you're a good project that's open source, you're gonna have forks. Uh, there's our DEXs. So it's interesting. I, I've just noticed that Core likes to absorb their forks. So that could be a smart play in the future or in the present that you might as well just embrace them, communicate with your forks, absorb their liquidity so that you get more liquidity locked up. So I'm very bullish square, or excuse me, um, core. So we got, here we go, here's our list of DEXs. Um, I don't know if anybody looks at any other DEXs, but we pretty much got Uniswap one inch, here's our list. Um, probably keep it at this right now. We could probably add Dodo on the Binance Smart Chain. I just don't know if we're ready to add Dodo. It seems like Dodo is getting more and more. Um, there we go, that looks a lot better. Pretty much every little symbol gets one square. 
horizontally uh, or vertically, and then we don't care about horizontally. Hey, David Burke. Yes, this is a continuation from yesterday. I started this map like last week, um, and it's quite it's getting quite large. Um, probably got a good fifty organizations on there now, maybe. So started it last week, and we're gonna make this thing look beautiful. Um, we're gonna we're mapping it by OSI layer, David, and then um, we're gonna get we're gonna drop in and map it by you know we're mapping DAOs. We're gonna map by uh, blockchain once other blockchains become a little bit um, you know have a few more dApps and live products. So now lending and borrowing is just massive. We could get into lending and borrowing um, a lot more. So let me zoom in actually. Here's our lending and borrowing list. I think actually by the end of this exercise, we may have the best crypto map in the world. Um, I've seen others. There are some good ones out there. If I can make this thing look beautiful and we can continue to just put a bit of time in here, map these all out, add links, I think we'll have the best one. And then I think um, we'll be updating this thing about quarterly, I'm thinking. Um, I think a lot of a lot of valuations that I look at, if I do any personal ones, I'll try to roll, roll those forward quarterly, um, kind of just stick to that credence that the public market set. Very curious if um, crypto organizations are going to fall into the um, quarterly reporting standards that legacy financial markets have have fallen into. There's a lot of a lot of talk around quarterly earnings calls um, hampers long term growth, and and that you know we should abolish the quarterly earnings reports because it incentivizes investors for short term growth. It's an interesting concept. Obviously, it makes a lot of sense theoretically. Um, wondering if crypto will overcome this. Is this Celsius? Yeah, we put Celsius in lending and borrowing. Today, I'm going to create a little section. I'll probably add Celsius to asset management as well. We do have, if anybody's got any opinions, we've got this one designation called asset management. I'm not the biggest fan of the designation. We got cream, we got Celsius. Some of these should exist in multiple, and probably once we get a better list, I'll probably add add them everywhere. Um, cool. So here's all of our, there it is. We've got decentralized asset management is what people are calling it. And actually, I do need to add names to, all, to, to most of these symbols. A lot of these symbols are hard to remember. Cool. So here's our here's our lending and borrowing list. Uh, Mave, BZ, BZRX, um, and many others. Kava. Let me know on Kava if I've got that that in the right place. I think I do. The yield farming list. Um, well, we have the question of whether we should add forks. Um, I think I need to add back Yam because it seems like Yam is not dead. Yam is still going. They've got something planned. It seems like. So, but here's, in my opinion, our major yield farming. And actually, you guys probably know this just as well as I. Um, what are our best yield farming opportunities um, or websites? Because these are the ones I have. I think this is a pretty decent list. We've got YFI, Cream, Farm, Harvest, Pickle, um, Curve, Core, Acropolis, Morning Ed. Cave, you notice that MooneySwap was recently added to Dune Analytics, Dex Metrics Dashboard. They don't seem to have a token. You're right, and it doesn't seem like MooneySwap's going away either. So I think we should add them. We don't need organizations that are just token organizations. Um, and plus, all of these organizations in the future could, could have tokens. So we've got yield farming, the king of yield farming in, y in YFI and Curve. We'll put them at the top. So we will add Mooney Swap logo. Might as well. I haven't used. I should actually um, bust out from a few from Uniswap and just. I used to compare one inch to Uniswap um, a lot more, and now I've, I've kind of stopped. So I, I should get back on that. Yesterday, I got back into Pool Together, the um, the no loss lottery system, because their new incentive or their new um, interest each month is like. A thousand bucks, 
or each week, excuse me, it's like a thousand bucks. And then additionally, they have like a, a little loot box, which a bunch of different uh, altcoins in there. So I went and put a put a hundred bucks back in, um, back in uh, pool together. Cool. So here's the Mooney swap. And actually, let's just grab the name. I didn't know Mooney swap was made by One Inch. It says next generation AMM protocol by One Inch, which is interesting. Let's go to our DeFi list. Let me zoom in here. Oh, jeez. There we go. There we go. Sweet. So we got Mini Swap on there as well. Got our lending and borrowing. We've got our dexes. Um, somebody in the comments made sure I had XRP on there yesterday, and I told them thank you. Can't forget XRP for all those new investors, all those people that are buying BTC yesterday, buying BC, BTC today. I think they're the same people that are holding um, holding XRP. I think there'd be high correlation there. Cool. So there's our yield farming list. It's a pretty good yield farming list. Um, where have I else? Where have I yield farmed? I need to add Meta MTA. So let's do that. Meta is one of those ones where it kind of does a bunch of different things. Um, does it's like a savings account, so it's a bit of asset management. I I wanted to I wanted to double check if there's yield farming. It's a governance token. They do have a decentralized app. So next to yield farming, let's slap derivatives. Um, I just see the two being very closely tied together, derivatives and yield farming. I see yield. I see derivatives opening up additional yield farming opportunities. Here we go, Autom autonomous and non-custodial stablecoin infrastructure. Hmm. Maybe we do have a stablecoin sections. Yes, Guanxi, you're saying a lot of normies hitting you up. How should I handle this? I don't want them to get owned like I did. Exactly. I'm I'm going to be super honest with my friends and family um, that I've stopped buying Bitcoin. Um, now, yeah, and it's just like oh, unable to connect wallet. Um, it's it's kind of like when do you tell your friends and family to stop? I think it's today. But if they don't own any Bitcoin, is it better to own some Bitcoin um, and kind of be you know near profit or at a slight loss? At least you own some Bitcoin for the next two years. Or do you just tell them to wait and just completely risk it? Then again, with the bull run coming up, um, so M stable will have to put. Maybe we have a stable coin. I don't want to. I don't know if I want a stable coin section, but maybe we have organizations that are building for stable coins, kind of like an RSR. We don't know. I didn't know where to put reserve token yesterday, so maybe we create some like some sort of stable coin platform. This could be. An average idea, but we'll we'll drop it down here. Good question for everyone. When do you stop telling your aunt and uncle or your friends and family? Um, or actually, yeah, tell people younger in, than you in your in your family to buy crypto. When do you tell them? My question is, when do you tell them to stop buying Bitcoin? Um, it's a, I think it's probably around twenty or probably around the new all time highs. So we're gonna call these stable coin kind of protocols and we're, we'll see where that takes us. We'll add RSR, we'll add M stable. Here we go, sweet. Now ETH, ETH on the other hand, Ether, I'll tell my friends to buy Ether probably all the way up until a thousand bucks. I think Ether's got a long way to run. And 
it's funny. I don't I guess I'm, I'm more bullish on Bitcoin still, but I don't know why I'm seems ether just seems really, really, um, really, really cheap relatively compared to Bitcoin. I like when people say things are cheap and then they don't follow up with what they are relatively cheap to. Hey, morning forest. How's Texas going? Hopefully Texas like likes crypto. Certainly Austin, Texas should like crypto because um, they're turning into a, a startup and a fintech hub. So they should be on the forefront. Cool. Here's all of our risk coverage um, tokens, which this list I think will grow very quickly in the near future. We've got NNXM. We've got Ensure. I don't even have cover protocol here. Um, I can't find CR cover protocol crypto. I've been struggling to find that CVP token. I believe that's what it is. Oh, it's the safe token. Okay, we do have the safe token. And then I keep forgetting the name of this one, this little bird, Eric something. So we got a good list here of risk insurers, and I think this is going to increase massively, um, especially around KYC, um, MAL. And I think Austin's bullish. That's good to hear. Ah, good. We got two from Texas. Um, I think risk smart contract insurance is, is staying put. It's not going anywhere. We need it. Um, so, and then hopefully we extend our decentralized insurance services into other industries outside of smart contracts. That's probably where my investment in um, risk coverage comes from. It's like, great, smart contracts are going to be huge, massive amounts. And, you know, these organizations will be the gold standard for um, smart contract risk coverage. But then also they can still go and cover, um, hopefully once we get better on-chain data, they can still cover real world assets. Cool, so we'll put that there. I do want to put derivatives right next to yield farming, given the synergies. And derivatives is, is, is a tougher one. This one will grow really fast too. Let's start with everybody's favorite options network, Hedgic. I really, really should have bought some more hedge or bought some Hedgic that very first day that kind of Andre Cronier quoted or texted about it or excuse me, tweeted about it that he was working with it. So he's, they're working with stock options, very bullish on derivatives. We'll put UMA under derivatives as well. Haven't used UMA too much personally. And then we've got the injective protocol here, which is a logo people might not recognize. Cool, so we got the cover protocol. Now if I go active. Um, every one of these little symbols is gonna have a link to CoinGecko. We debated whether putting in, yeah, they'll have a link to all the CoinGeckos. Well, there it is, the injective protocol. Oh, sweet. Cool. So we've got our derivatives there. It says it's an exchange-based token. I'm going to have to double check the injective protocol. ESD for stable coins. Sounds good. ESD. Yep. Empty set dollar suite. Cave, you said we had several 30% corrections in the 2017 BCC bull run. If they really want to buy in the coming year, that's one I'm recommending. That's a great, that's a great example. Um, on the way up to the top of the 2017 run, we did have quite a few like you said, 30% pullbacks. So that is the time to buy. There still is time to buy. Because honest, even if that 30% pullback, say we go from 18 and we really do break through, we hit 20, in, in like say Q1, we do hit 25, we do hit 30, 35K. Then we say we hit 35, then we have a pullback down to say 22, 21. That's probably um, what I'm envisioning in, for in case of a bull case in the next like six months. Okay, sweet. So we got stablecoin protocols coming together. Um, I also wanted to put in reserve rights token because essentially their token is the valuation proposition of stablecoins. Cool. 
I'm seeing a very common circular black logo theme with our stablecoin protocols. Cool. So we've got our stablecoin protocols. God, I'm so jazzed for this map. Once this thing gets legit and it make it looks good, we're gonna have the best map in crypto. And we're not too far off. We're just gonna make this look good. We've got a pretty good list here. Now let's dive into some of these more tertiary industries. I've got our DeFi industries and our prediction markets. All of these are still DeFi. So we'll keep those up there. Um, probably a really good one to exemplify that will grow quickly is supply chain. Data and artificial intelligence. Zoom out here. Okay, sweet. Um, I'm struggling with layer three solutions, so we'll have to add layer three. Sweet, we're gonna put all of these other industries right below all the DeFi industries for now. Um, for those that weren't here yesterday, oops. We are mapping um, off of this OSI map. If you haven't seen this one, it's a great map. This is kind of what we're mapping to, layer one through layer four all of our different industries. Um, I've broken it up by mostly industry at layer four so far, kind of like they do. They break it up by browsers, exchanges, supply chain. So we're gonna break it up by industries as well. Oops. Um, we definitely need more. I need to just go and look in Crypto Slate for some of our. Uh, actually, let me do that while I'm playing around here. If we go to Crypto Slate, love Crypto Slate when it comes to um, industry classifications. They do a really good job, just like CoinGecko, of having some tags and creating almost industry comparable sets for us. Okay, I like that. Oracles in layer three. Let's do that. And obviously it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, really something that I don't think people, what I might do um, is actually do a little write up for this map as well of like how to read it, how to use it. Um, the fact that we could, you know, put a lot of these different solutions into multiple buckets. We've got a really good list of oracles here. If you need a, if you need to divide, diversify your Oracle portfolio, here's a, here's eight tokens that I was mentioning yesterday that are pretty solid and actually yeah, we'll just leave that there. Cool, so we got supply chain. We also need more in data. We've only got two in both supply chain and data. And I think we know use cases, or we know, we know organizations that claim to have use cases. That's a good way to put it. I love, um, I love everybody talking trash on altcoins yesterday. When, whenever BTC does well, it's just, it's a way for the BTC maxis to, to hop out and, you know, really just throw in their two cents about why altcoins are bad. And yes, we're very, very early with a lot of these organizations in the valuation creation kind of life cycle. Cool. We got artificial intelligence. We got data here. Um, We've got Fetch, we've got Singularity Net, we've got Effect AI, and we have Vector Space. What about IOTA, Jay Young? So Jay Young, we got IOTA off in this, we got a section called Next Generation Blockchain Tech. So that's where we wanna put all of our sharding, um, anything past proof of stake. 
Um, so we've got Hedera Hashgraph in there. So all of our hash graphs, and then we've got IOTA in there as well. So if you've got any next generation blockchain techs, that's pretty much our blockchain 2.0, blockchain 3.0. I don't know if those are phrases. So we do have IOTA there. Um, I didn't want to put it in blockchain. We were, we were debating, probably should put it in. No, I want to put it in next generation blockchain because that's, that's still accurate. Toolkit for enterprise adoptions seems like a sensible play. Oh yeah, UBT. I'm so confused um, about UBT. I really, if, if this is the one we're thinking about. So I'm on Crypto Slate on the left um, while we continue to map. If you go to coins on Crypto Slate, you can go down here to not only coin categories, they've got different categories, biggest gainers, biggest losers, proof of work coins. Um, they've also got sectors down here as well. They've got a good list of sectors that I usually will come here if I want to just compare and contrast. They, I always forget they don't have a supply chain designation, which is really frustrating. But if we, yeah, okay, well, it's too bad. POZ block stack. Hey, morning, Blake. Uh, I don't know PO, POZ blocks, or POX, sorry. POX, do they, have, do they have a token? There it is, block stack STX. Let's have a look at them while we add our next industry next to artificial intelligence. Um, Next to artificial intelligence, let's go with storage and gaming. Those are two obvious plays for us with distributed ledger tech. So those are those are easy to conceptually understand. We might just put all our industries together. Um, have DeFi wrapped together. We'll put our industries together that are outside of DeFi. I think come 2021, I hopefully we get um, a lot more conversation outside of DeFi um, into you know, actually right here into storage coins. I, I could see 2021 being the year of storage coins. Hopefully by then file coins matured a bit, people are building on it, using it. Um, we have yet to see kind of a mass migration of all of our data from centralized servers onto these these platforms. It's, it's still not very user-friendly. I've used Sia coin the most out of storing some of my videos. And here's STS block stack. Let's have a look at what they do. They're an infrastructure play. I think we do have an infrastructure designation. Where did I put that? There it is. Oops, we do have an infrastructure designation in layer two. I'm unsure what to put there. That's always a tough one. Um, so we do have that available for us. Easy built decentralized apps, block stacks, open source, developer friendly network for building dApps and smart contracts. Great. I'm wondering if we have should have a kind of a tool section. This to me, this to me is a what is this? It's open source and developer friendly um, tools. So yeah, you were. I think you mentioned that's a squanchy and a, a, a toolkit. So block stacks and anyone got any recommendations on where to put block stack? Um, doesn't look they do have a token. They help you and I, I might actually have a look at them later. I'm starting to dabble in some smart contract writing, just because I don't think it's going to go away. And it's not too. It's actually quite complicated. It's funny the smart contracts themselves, the solidity contracts themselves, the SOLs aren't that difficult. Um, you can kind of get the gist of what's going on, what you're creating. Um, kind of what transaction or events happening um, you create. So the contract itself, the solidity contract is not too difficult. Um, it's really mapping that solidity contract to all of your other web, your, your app.js, your, all of your, your JavaScript, your front end, your, your web three assembly. That's the tough part in my opinion, coming from a non-coder. Um, if anybody wants to dabble in some coding, I am starting to, and it's been quite interesting. I really just want to get, kind of a, a storefront started. Um, kind of like similar to this, actually. These guys are really cool, in my opinion. Um, this was a great website that I found yesterday called Saint Fame. Um, I think they, they're doing the same thing as the Unisox, not Uniswap, Unisox, where Uniswap puts some socks onto a bonding curve, and now the socks cost like two grand. This is similar. 
all this is is a simple Web 3.0 website connected to my MetaMask. They're selling a T-shirt for about a thousand dollars. So it's less. This one's less about the price and more about the experimentation. And if you're if you like high fashion, I guess it's, it's kind of a decent shirt. So that's that. That is really the goal. Is we just want to we're working towards getting a DAP up. So block stack we should add to the list. Um, it's just where. Hopefully that copied over. No, it did. So cool. We've got and now we're on to gaming here. Let me know your thoughts on block stack. You might have a tools section. Cool. So we've got a UOS Ultra. We've got Theta. Um, Cash tag theta. And we've got engine token, E N J I N, and then I, I believe this is Axie Infinity, and I should link that one because I don't re really remember the, the Axie Infinity logo too well. Where did Blockstack go? There it is. Actually, what we really should do is have a list. Okay, well, that one's not going to work. Um, what we really should do, this is a great idea, is have a list of 3.0 web 3.0 businesses. That one's going to be harder because they're going to pop up everywhere. Um, but I think we'll be able, though, I think there'll be some stale warrants. Gala, CoinGecko. I love it when I see like people from legacy industries. Um, Logie, you were mentioning that the Gala Games founder is from Zynga. I love it when we have people that move over. Um, Obviously, I guess by definition, everybody's moving over. Here's Gala. I've actually never heard of Gala games. So let's slap this map down, or this logo here and check out the website. We'll see if it's legit. Cool. There we go. Uh, it's another universe that's owned by players a very theme here in the 21st century power back to the consumer cool there's our gaming section we've just added gala.games join the revolution today i don't know logi do you think logi do you think this has has legs it's good they're building in sandbox games that's good Oh, cool. So they've got an agricultural simulation that's built in smart contracts. People do love those farming games. Cool. So we will we'll leave that one up there. I've never heard of Gala Games. Uh, thank you, Logie, for the, for the hot, fresh, hot tip. We'll add that one, and we'll see how we go. And obviously, if, you, if anybody sees a shitcoin on here, please let me know. One of our big goals here is just defining shitcoins and making them, making them known to everyone. All right, next to gaming, let's throw in energy. Energy's been kind of a very, very slow start for energy in, in decentralized tech. Cool, so for our energy tokens, um, and actually, Logie, you can tell that that Gala Games was the creator of Farmville. He's probably a master of building farm games. So here's our two energy tokens. We have Energy Web Token and also Power Ledger out of Australia. Um, Power Ledger's had a lot of really good press um, a couple of years ago, and have kind of just you know, just slowed. You know, obviously, they're, I think they're solving complex problems. So there's our energy designation. Let me zoom out. Um, Good. Our layer four is looking a little more organized up here with all of our different industries for our all of our different applications and solutions. Um, we've got finance up the top. Let's go and fix finance here on the top right. Um, we've got all of our different industries. And then down here on the bottom right, we've kind of just got a mixture. Um, I think actually staking and ETH 2.0 staking should probably go layer three even though some might be layer two, we'll slap them in the middle between all the different services um, and layer two, just so that people know that there is that bit of that little bit of a layer. Um, 
And oh yeah, we can add virtual reality. They are that's a legit, that's a legit industry. And actually, I should we should add sandbox, um, sandbox games. And then anybody has anybody used Somnium Space yet? Somnium Space virtual reality. In my opinion, every virtual reality plays a crypto play. I just see them almost married to each other in the future. Given by definition in a virtual world, you can't have a physical currency. So the pairing of virtual worlds and tokens and coins, it seems to be inevitable. Cool. And then we've got our centralized exchange coins, which we can slap at the end of our DeFi list because we don't care about them. Uh, we do. I do finance. Uh, I think CZ gets a hard time. So... Yeah, let's just leave this off here to the right for a second. And let's go s fix these four different finance sections. We got DeFi indices, which I'm really pumped we're doing. DeFi indices aren't going away. We could actually start to create a few more indices as well. Mainly, in my opinion, around RAP BTC. And we could just give a list of all the different indices out there that include RAP BTC exposure. Cool. So our three DeFi indices so far, and we should probably add set pro set token here. We have DeFi. What is that? DPI. We have the Power Pool protocol, and then we also have Index Coop with the little Al. I need to get a better logo for our little Al guy. So that's good. I'm glad we're marking out indices. Uh, that's going to be helpful for people. And this list will grow. We've only got three. That's going to be probably 10 pretty soon. Next is prediction markets. Let me know if you've got any others. Um, I couldn't find Poly. Oh, there's Sandbox. Beautiful Sandbox Games logo. I couldn't find anything for Poly, Polymath. Maybe I'm wrong that Polymath is a prediction market. On our prediction markets, we do have Augur. And I think I also put down here uh, Numerar, Numerare. Always struggle to pronounce that one. Cool. So we have our prediction markets. They certainly need to be there. Um, we should add Polymarket because this Polymarket got a lot of pub uh, positive publicity. Oh, Barnbridge. That's right. Bond token. Bridge, great. Um, Poly market got a lot of great publicity from the obviously the US presidential election. It's probably when prediction markets will be at their best um, or at their most used. Um, probably that, maybe the Super Bowl as well. So let's definitely add Poly market beta into our prediction markets area, even though they don't have a token. Um, doesn't mean they can't have a token in the future. Where'd that guy? There it is. Hopefully that works. No, it doesn't. So, and then we've also got, like I mentioned, decentralized asset management. That is kind of our catch-all at the moment. There we go. Interoperability exchange coins. Maybe we should move REN elsewhere, but that's really what it is. Cool. And then hopefully we can actually get a poly market logo. If not, eh, that's probably our best one. How's crypto doing? As a group, we could offer staking on ANKR, just a thought. That's a great thought. We could. We could be. Um, what do you call them? Like a stake aggregator? And then charge people for running the staking services? That's where, um, hopefully, within our research community, we can get um, 
a few people that that want to learn some dev work um, that want to dabble and start building rather than just investing. So that's why I do want to keep our conversations both um, obviously around investing. We all love our altcoins. We all love BTC. I do want to keep our conversation going around Web 3.0 business just to continue to watch what people are building, um, what industries are building, who's building. And then also, um, to your point, Forrest, maybe we built or maybe we use one of these services as a group. I do want to start a DAO in 2021 um, just for the fun of it. Cool, we've got our interoperability exchange coins, we've got REN, we've got um, RAP BTC, and we've got our Keep Network, which, which, which does uh, TBTC. Why is possibly for staking, but the CEO was connected to Hex. Oof, we all know Hex is a shit coin. Um, oh yeah, and now let's do our exchange coins. Our, And forgive any of the lagginess. Um, whenever I stream, this is a bit laggier than when I'm flying around Lucid Chart by myself. If anybody on the stream wants access to this, um, it is live right now. We're going to keep this access open to everyone until we're finished. So we can give you access if you want to help out. Mapping's kind of fun. Uh, where were we going? Excuse me. We wanted to check Wise after I got up the DeFi tokens. I don't know. I haven't heard of Wise. They're not up there. I spoke with the Wise guy. <laughs> Interesting. Cool for our exchange traded tokens. Um, I don't have them all here. I need. We need plenty more. Um, but we have Binance, Huobi, and FTX. That's a good list to start with. Cool. So now we've just got a nice little outline for our layer four solutions. This is great. Now let's stick layer three um, kind of right here-ish, and we'll put our staking there. Maybe we go clean up our smart contract platforms. I'm sure there's a few I've missed. Sweet. Oh, and then we can clean up our layer two solutions and our layer one. Cool. And then if anybody knows designers, maybe if I can't make this thing beautiful enough, I will pay um, someone a couple of hours worth of work to make this thing gorgeous. So if you have any designers, Happy to keep keep the money within the community, and we can use your designer friend. Let me zoom back in here. I've got a good list. Good list. Layer two is going to be a fun one. This is where probably we need we'll have the most discussion um, is around layer two and layer three. Um, this is all mapping to our blockchain technology stack. Layer two and layer three seem to be the toughest to sort of categorize. So we've got staking um, kind of in general. This is DMM group, um, staking based on or interest and yield, not yield farming, but earning interest are based off real world assets. So we've got a staking asset or a st staking section because there are some organizations that simply staking is the service. And it's far more understanding for ETH staking. Um, not quite sure about the other use cases of staking outside of ETH, given that you know I can go in put my money in a yield farm aggregator who will go and yield farm for me instead of staking you know just you know yield farming is staking on steroids pretty much so for our eth staking we have ankr we also have rocket pool probably a two good list here that that list could probably be 5 or 10 as well yes i believe you're right forest so for layer 3 we've got staking and eth staking um, nothing else yet what else could we put in there? Actually, if I open up my OSI level again. Oh, Logi, you're a designer by profession. Well, this design of my map is probably infuriating you, um, but we'll get there. We want to make it look something like this. 
like this bad boy on the right here. So we're going to aggregate all of our little images. We're going to link them all. We're going to put some colors on there, make it look good. So layer two and layer three is where we should have the most discussion. And we might do this one more time once I make the map a little bit more beautiful. Technically, Cardano is only staking today. That is true, Cave. They're not a smart contract platform. Hey, morning, Shaya. We're um, mapping out all of crypto. We're creating a global crypto map. And here it is. So we are going to turn it into something that looks really beautiful like this in the future. Right now, we're just mapping it out. We want to get all of our organizations and links on there, make sure we're doing it correctly. So let's go back down to layer two. Sounds like we're ready for layer two, which is going to be one of the funner ones. Because we have oracles, and oracles we're going to slap right between layer two and layer three, because they exist somewhere in there. Where's. Sweet. We've got a lot of Oracle services. Oh, you're in Discord, Logie. Perfect. Thank you, Zabata. We will we'll have a chat um, in the future and about making this thing look great. Lucid, I don't know about you, Logie, but Lucid chart seems like the easiest thing for me to make visual representations of things. Um, I also use Canva as well, not to dive into a designer conversation, but we can chat later. Sweet forest. See, this is what happens when you start a community. We're coming together, we're information sharing. Hopefully the community, um, I know the Discord's kind of quiet right now, obviously. We're just a small community, but hopefully um, the community together is a better investor than you can be alone. Um, kind of just the main value proposition of being within a research community. Um, a lot of people have calls like this in the morning where they can go and ask questions and talk to other people who are in the industry. Well, you have to be at kind of a, an investment firm or a research firm to really get access to that. Here we go. Oh, and actually, Logie, have you started dabbling into Web 3.0 development? Have you have you started look because you're a UX UI designer, so you know some you know some front end code, some Web Assembly code. Um, have you started dabbling in Web 3.0 um, building? And then, if not, why? I'm very curious. Like, if I'm a it's, if I'm a engineer sitting in college right now. Is there our professors giving them the option between Web 3.0 building and Web 2.0 building? Um, do they know? Am I even categorizing this correctly? Is there such a big difference between the two that you know you have to choose early on? Um, I learned Python, and then it seemed decently easy. Or excuse me, I didn't learn Python. I I dabbled with some Python and learned some learned some beginner stuff, and then it seemed like it was easy to transition from Python to Solidity. Cool. Here's our great Oracle list. We've got eight awesome or, or eight Oracles. Um, I know one's awesome in Chainlink, and the others we're waiting on. But that's a pretty good list. Oh, Cave, you're a front ender too. Wonderful. I like more back end, so maybe we can um, pool resources because I love getting the DAP set up and everything. And then the second that it's like, all right, let's let's connect it to the front end and make it look beautiful. I just I struggle big time. And actually, for everybody that while we're on WebAssembly, I might as well toot my own horn. Earlier this, I had never coded a website, and earlier this year, um, my goal was to learn how to pull API information. I just wanted to get to be able to pull a free API number from a website onto my website. Once crypto came along, um, crypto is very friendly in terms of open source code and um, open source. Uh, databases. So CoinGecko is free. You'll see a lot of the kind of um, metrics and um, information gatherers in crypto use are, are powered powered by CoinGecko at the bottom. If you have a look at my website here, all of these numbers here are pulled by AP, API, um, M1 Money Stocks from Fred, and then also BTC from CoinGecko. 
So I was pretty pumped with myself that I was able to do this earlier this year. This was a Web 2.0 app, just a little Flask application. As you can see, my, my front end design is atrocious. Now, the cool thing is I was able to connect to CoinGecko as well. And if we look at my, this page on my website, we can see the Aave ecosystem, which is broken. As you can see, we've got zeros here. So my, my API links are broken. But then you can also have the compound ecosystem here. And what I did was aggregate all of the wrapped compound tokens. So the total compound ecosystem market cap of about 2.5 billion. Then compared it to the compound market cap of about 400 million. So we have a compound market cap ecosystem over the compound market cap multiple of about 0 0.17. And I was going to do that for all of them, of all the wrap tokens, and see if there was some multiple that we could ascribe to it. So that was my foray. And that's enough about my website. Um, we had, I did foray into Web 2.0 building, and now I want to dabble into Web 3.0. We've got our privacy coins, um, pretty much just Monero and Zcash at the moment, but that list should be expanded. Um, I, I was kind of shocked that um, I always hear talk about Tornado Cash, and Tornado Cash doesn't is just a service. Um, they don't actually have a token, I believe. Ooh, these are some tough ones. These are all good ones. Um, so interoperability first. Um, we should, could probably throw Polkadot in there, but we've kept that down at the smart contract layer. So if there's a tool within the Polkadot blockchain that specifically solves for interoperability, I'm not quite sure if Polkadot blocks, blockchain just solves for that like in and of itself. But we've got Quant for our one interoperability token. Cave, you said, I don't think so. As far as I know, Web 3.0 just implies using a library like Ethereum's Web 3, just, which is just for managing private key sending transactions. Oh, good. That's good to know. OK. And actually, that's probably the most interesting part about coding for me, uh, which makes sense, is the actual, what do you just say, the managing of keys, the sending of transactions. Um, Obviously, everything you do on the Ethereum network is a transaction. Um, so that's obviously why I'm interested in that aspect of web design. Cool. So for scalability, I've got our Matic network, and I've also got our Kusama network. So those are our first two for scalability, which we will add a lot to, I'm sure. Kusama and Gollum, I actually didn't know where to put Gollum. If anybody has any opinions, let's open Gollum back up and just see how we're doing. Is. Hmm. There is Gollum. Great, everyone, look, a lot of people learning. Um, some web design for us, you're learning Solidity, great. Logi started as a dev. Yep, it's language agnostic, that's what I've noticed. A lot of it's just kind of being able to read maps and mapping arrays and... Cool, it seems like we, we've got a lot, a lot of very knowledgeable people within our community already. A lot of projects use the NPM ecosystem. So JS is a useful tool for managing mono repos, publish scripts, et cetera. I like NPM. I don't know why, but in my self-education, um, I've, I've somehow managed to flock to NPM. Under payments, payments is going to have a lot in the future, I think. Infrastructure, I don't know. Now, what is Gollum? Golem products live. We did this exact same thing yesterday, and I couldn't figure it out. Golem is a global open source essentialized supercomputer. Um, so it's a supercomputer. It's not quite smart contracts. OK, we're putting it under scalability. This one's debatable. I'll actually probably. Once we have this thing built out a bit more, I may actually just write down all the ones that I'm questionable on. 
um, and we can leave it up to the community to see where we put them. Under payments, PCX for DOT, thank you very much, Forrest. PCX for DOT ecos, there we go, PCX coin gecko. Um, we'll, ha we'll have a lot probably for payments. Right now we've just got the three in Dash, XRP, and UTK. Plenty of people are solving the payment layer solution or the payment processing layer. Here we go. Here's ChainX. That's right. ChainX. Good call. Awesome. So, we, okay, we got you trust. Let's check it out. Actually, we'll get ChainX here really quickly for interoperability. And then. Oh, yeah, buddy, Stellar. Trust Swap. I would doubt that'll be on there. Oh, there it is. Sweet, Trust Swap. Trust Dow. And then also um, ABBC. I haven't heard of ABBC. Awesome. This is great. Yeah, Stellar, I guess we'll have to put in the payments section. I think. I actually put it down track platforms. Yeah, I did. So I, I'll move Stellar up to payments for now. I don't see them competing with the block. I don't see them uh, um, competing with the blockchain solutions. All right, well, I'll grab it later. Um, trust swap. Hmm, haven't heard of haven't heard of trust swap before. You were mentioning these for payments, so let's, let's uh, throw the trust swaps. And then ABBC for payments as well. Oof, we've got no market cap. Oh, good. Thank you, Cave. They're more merchant oriented. We do like, I do want to see what the merchants are using. The future of payment security for ABBC. Pretty decent little website, I guess. So that's ABBC. Let's see, Trust Swap. Actually, what was that? Looks like they're going to have a wallet, ABBC. Eh, I don't know if I like this one very much. We'll leave it on there for now. Cool. So we've got five now under payments that we'll probably add to that in the future. Cool. So Trust Swap is smart contract services and evolution in DeFi transactions. Cool. Software integrations. There he is. The man, Jeff. Cool. So we've got payments. Let me zoom out here to get back to our map. We're almost made this thing look really good. We've added a few coins today. Um, we're breaking it out. It's much better better spaced out. We might tackle layer one now. Trust Swap is an escrow service more focused on VC funding. Interesting. Cool. I've heard of Pundi before. Pundi X, there it is. NPXS. Uh, one organization I found yesterday that I wanted to ask you all about. Oh yeah, the NOIA network. Pundi X. I'm not quite sure if anyone's heard of this organization. Uh, probably some have the NOIA network, the world's first programmable internet backbone as a service. 
we need a parachain section for Polkadot. That's a great idea. Let's list out all the parachains. I've put our, oops, oh, don't go too far. I've put our block chains up the top here next to our DAOs. So under Polkadot, let's just create a parachain designations that we know in the future we want to build this. And actually, I don't even know if we have any parachains out there. But we will be the first to know. Cool. Oh, let's add to the NFT section. Any, if anybody knows any other rebasing coins, uh, we do have a rebase section as well. We want to go to Mintable. Terrible meme. And actually, some of these logos going to have to ask the community again what those are, but we'll cross that bridge when we, when we come to it. Oh, yeah, the near, near protocol. That's right. We've got our different NFTs we're going to add here now. Let me, let me also put near network. I kind of forget what they do, but they're, I've heard a lot of talk about them. Near for blockchain sounds good. Actually, let's let's just get these NFTs down. There's meme, awesome. Here's Pundi X or Pundix. Grow your business with Bitcoin. Use digital currency anywhere, and it's like a payment solution. This sounds great. Hey Tao, have you added YFDI? We looked at YFDI yesterday, um, and I think we decided to not add in YFDI yet, even though I think one or two people said it's legit. Do you think it's a legit enough to add? So I'm just going to add Pundi X, then we'll close those tabs. Let me show you our list of yield farming tokens, and I will ask you if YFDI is in the same league as the other altcoins. Cool, so there's Pundi X as well, so we've got six payment providers now. Those are, those are tough, I feel like, for retail investors to value the... Um, value the value or ascribe a value to payment processors. Here's our yield farming. Um, here's our yield farming uh, area. So we talked about YFDI. Well, I want to leave it off for now, but if you have a strong case, I am always open to a strong argument. Cool. So here's Mintable. Um, let's grab Mintable's logo. They are certainly one of the leaders in the NFT space along with Rarible. They've gone more for the... Hmm. And we'll grab the meme token, the little pineapple. Oh yeah, that's right, Cave. Um, good memory. YFDI um, is not available in the US and unfortunately, I'm slightly biased, but if if it if it has a lot of usage outside of the U.S., we should add it. This is a this is a global map, obviously. I just want to see what color scheme Rary Rarible's using. They're sticking with the yellow. Okay, so sweet. We've got there's more NFTs. Um, we also should put in OpenSea. Gosh, this list is going to be so good. I already think we probably have the best crypto map in the world outside of, you know, uh, how good it looks. I 
I've been wanting to build this map for so long. It's funny how um, certain things you do or certain things kind of block your block your brain waves and your thought processes before you get it done. I've been wanting to build this map for so long and I feel like completing this map will then open me up to <laughs> kind of other thoughts that have been blocked before I finish this map. Cool, here's OpenSea. OpenSea should definitely be on our map. Maybe um, we actually, let's start this now. One of, probably gonna be one of my favorite sections is our web 3.0 business section. Web 3.0 business, um, we're definitely gonna put OpenSea in both NFTs and in Web 3.0 businesses, ORN. Yep, we, I don't think we mapped ORN yesterday. We had a look, and I think that was an issue with me not understanding with what it was. Cool, here's OpenSea, what an epic logo. And we'll throw you, actually all three of you, All, actually all four of our NFTs um, are already fully fledged businesses. And I don't know their actual transaction fees for our NFT section. Um, I haven't looked at the, um, the payment structure of Mintable, Rarible. Actually Mintable just takes, I think, what, like 2% of your sales fee. So they, they take care of pretty much all the costs and they just, they just um, charge a sales fee, which for someone that just wants to, I don't mind giving up 2% of my sales as long as um, a place like Mintable provides all the tools and solutions and the ecosystem. So we've got both our web 3.0 businesses, which we're gonna have a big list. And we've also got our NFT list, which are looking pretty much the same at the moment. Also with web 3.0 businesses, we, you could throw a bunch of DeFi in there as well. So we'll see how this web 3.0 section uh, kind of evolves, but I'm, I'm glad we're doing it because I want a big sell for me when I'm kind of talking to people about crypto and saying, hey, buy cryptos, get a MetaMask wallet, here's why. Um, it's, it's for the web 3.0 businesses. It's just being able to, the ease, um, even though it's funny, I think web 3.0 businesses are an easier UI UX, but we're not quite there with having designers in the space to make it a better UI UX. So we're at this weird spot where I see MetaMask as a far better solution than passwords and, and usernames and credit cards um, and that whole checkout process drama that we go through. But the UI UX is so bad that um, a simpler solution is actually more complex at the moment. And that's just my little rant on pretty much saying that we're early. So we're still early in the market. I also have a rebasing section. Let me quickly look at the Orion protocol. Um, and then if I go to based, CoinGecko, we had a look at this yesterday. CoinGecko does list out their rebasing tokens. And then they give you the chart for a rebasing token in market cap. Because obviously price for rebasing tokens, they recapitalize often. The price is less um concerning to us more than more so the market cap any of these tokens for rebasing don't get diluted continue to earn more based if you're gonna own based and actually you can't get diluted from based that's awesome most of theirs is already issued um, but if we go to the rebase tokens which i found um the coin gecko does have a tag let's go and see if i think we've grabbed them all The future of trading is finally here for Orion. Orion is trade with the liquidity, the entire market. This looks like a DeFi play, but not DeFi. Yep, building the future of DeFi. Okay, so Orion definitely deserves to be on our list. Um, am I on the right one? Okay, so it's a DeFi aggregator. Not quite sure where to put Orion. Let's throw it on there.
Great. Ah, uh, for... Hmm. We'll put it over near our dex aggregators at the moment. Not, not too happy about that, but we will have to look. Maybe we have a sex... I'm not quite sure what they do. So we'll throw it under dexes for now. I've never used Orion. but this is why we're doing this as a group. Great, uh, let me go back to CoinGecko. We'll see how the market's doing. Where were we? We were over here in the rebasing tokens. Oh yeah, so I've got, the, for our rebasing tokens, I've kind of got the big ones. Got ample fourth, empty set dollar. Oh yeah, Yam is back. Jay Young, there's also OGN, a blockchain Shopify, more e-commerce. Awesome. Let's have a look at OGN. OGN, ONG. Someone was saying Yam's coming back with a vengeance yesterday. They had something on their website like something's coming soon. So the Yam game's not done. We're still at 11 million market. It's a higher market cap than some of my investments, unfortunately. Cool. So we got Yam back. We're rebasing with Yam again. I never got in on Yam, and I'll probably stay out. Cool. That's a pretty good little list there. We got the NFT list now. Um, we got a rebasing list. I also have a list of DAOs up here in the top right-hand corner. Um, for our DAO section, it's pretty much just, and for anybody that wants to learn more about DAOs, I believe it's called DAO, Deep DAO. Yeah, Deep DAO. What a great name. ORN is a DeFi aggregator, okay. I think I know what that actually I don't know what a DeFi aggregator means because um, to me that's I think that's an exchange. Cool. So we've got um, District NX, District N. Is that what it's called? So on Deep DAO on the left hand side, actually let me zoom out. We've got our list of uh, DAOs. So if we created a DAO, we'd want to get it big enough that we'd get on here. So. Got our list of DAOs. Um, the biggest one, Pi DAO. And actually, I didn't know M Stable was a DAO. So a lot of our organizations that are living down in layer two or layer three solutions probably will have a DAO connected to them, and we can start listing out all the DAOs in the world. Cool. So here is our crypto map. Um, we're probably ready to head down to our smart contract section again. No, Tao, I don't have a cloud storage category yet. That's a good point, um, probably should. Uh-oh, let me go and grab my map charger. Um, and let me go back to CoinGecko because my computer's about to is about to die. So let me just leave it here with a nice picture of the whole map that we got going so far, and I'll be back in two seconds. Cool, so everything's looking good. Probably time to head down to our smart contract platform and kind of layer one section. This section's actually, let me do this later. This section's, um, the smart contract platform section's not too complicated. I just need to 
make those logos look nice. So that's easy. Currencies and blockchains, next generation blockchain tech. Yeah, Cave, that is a good, that is a good question. What is the difference between, so Tau for cloud storage, we have data storage. And let me, data storage, storage, same thing, we'll put data storage. But that's probably, if you, um, Tau, if you have any cloud storage solutions that we should add there, that's probably what we'll put it. We'll probably put it in the data storage section. Okay. Any in the big 100? I think we've got all the top 10 besides Bitcoin Cash, which I don't care about. Yeah. All right, we'll add Bitcoin Cash just to be uh, just to be proper. No one buy Bitcoin Cash. Any other just straight up currencies? Yeah, if there's any currencies out there um, that just want to be currencies, which is a fine proposition. I've called them currencies, but stores of value. Come up with your own. Uh, I think that's probably the best destination for now. Um, so we've got the top 10, Polkadot, Binance, Cardano. I won't do Bitcoin Satoshi value as well. I think Bitcoin Cash is enough for us. USD coin, EOS, we've got all those. Wrapped, Monero, Tron, we even have. Tezos, we don't have OKB. Oh, yeah, let's go back to our asset management one. It's not asset management, it's, so the three that I wanna talk about are crypto.com, Celsius, and Nexo. So probably that's a pretty good way to answer it is, I don't know if anyone knows what Nexo is. Um, where would where should we put Nexo? Where should we put crypto.com? Where should we put Celsius? They, I forget, I think they are custodial. Hmm. I'm not quite sure, but I'm gonna, we're gonna have to have them on here. So create them on here. Yeah, so we'll get crypto.com. Oh, there it is, decentralized asset management. There's Celsius. Yeah, probably. All right, you're right. I'm trying to beat around the bush and not call them a centralized exchange. Maybe they're a centralized bank. Like, thinking, question mark. I know they're not my bank, but they are giving me an interest rate and they are holding my assets. Cool, and then the other one I wanted to get on there was Nexo. And we've got a near to the smart contract platforms. Tao, would you say INXT is a good one for storage? I haven't checked on it for some time though. I haven't heard of INXT, so let's take a look. We'll add Nexo here to our quote unquote banking services. And then down here for our smart contract platforms. We'll add near. Believe it's a smart contract platform. The builder's fastest path to market. Here's another one that we could put in the block stack category of kind of tools and building tools. So let's create. This one, I don't know if we'll build this out too much. I'm more interested in mapping organizations um, and companies 
and you know things that we can value um things that but maybe some people will be interested in what would this be tools and resources um This is a development tool, so let's call them that. So, if maybe other people will be more interested in in mapping that out than I will be, but it seems like we do have some tokens related to development tool software providers. So um, that is, there is a question there of should there be a token system, a token economic system related to software development tools. And maybe they prove that there should be. And then I'm going to put block stack in here as well, which we talked about earlier in the call today. It's also a website or a tools and, and suite of services that helps us build. Cool. Actually, I'm not going to be too pumped on that one, but I think other people will be. I hope this map takes on a life of itself one day. I think we should do something pompous and call it like the crypto map. You know how people are like, it's you know, like this is the 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 spot for this. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but pretty much we're going to be pompous and say this is the crypto map, the unofficial official crypto map of the world. Cool. So there's our development tools. We've got near on there now. Um, I got to go back to Nexo for our banking services. There's probably a few that I'm definitely missing with banking. Um, like someone that people probably won't know. Avanti Group, Avanti Financial Group. They are a crypto bank now. Cool. So we got this is the list that I wanted to create earlier. This is the this is the area that I talk to people um, about if they want to get their Bitcoin earning some interest. I usually tell them to take them to one of these three organizations if they don't want to wrap it up and put it in DeFi, which I'm very hesitant to, to hesitant to as well. Still, so these are trustworthy organizations in my opinion. Yeah, Infura and Cloudflare. This is where. Yeah, you're totally right, Cave. We could we could go down the rabbit hole of kind of all of these organizations. That's why I'm kind of hesitant to even start it. Like Infura, for sure. IPFS, 100%. There's a ton that we could add. Let's probably add those two. And then let's add Avanti Financial Group. And then the other one, um, IPFS. And then there's also like Unstoppable Domains that we should probably get. Probably should have unstoppable domains. Who knows if do unstoppable domains needs its own categorization? Cool, but we'll, we'll do infura, even though. Yeah, that's a good question, Forrest, on uh, Centivate. Let me look it up while we're loading all of our different pages. S N T V T. Honestly, the hardest thing against Centivate is their token cash tag. I looked into this one probably a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago. We're about 13 million. It's the Internet of Things. Oh, I thought it was yield farming. Oh yeah, ganache, that's right, ganache and truffle and all that kind of stuff. How good is truffle unbox react? I really wish my Twitter name was truffle unbox react. Um, what did you just say, ganache and... Here's um, Centivate. Centivate is a hybrid web built to be a viable replacement for the modern web, faster, safer, more scalable than any so solely centralized or decentralized web. Interesting. They're also trying to create a brand new internet. This one's, yeah, I'm going to hold off on this.
I don't know where to put this. But let's grab the info logo. Even though it shouldn't be red. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, for banking, Avanti, do they even have a logo? They do, sweet. Avanti Financial Group's um, a crypto bank out of Wyoming now. Wyoming Bank formed to serve as a compliant bridge between digital assets and the US dollar. Good for them. Doing God's work. Who knew that Little Wyoming would be a leader in the cryptocurrency space? Very, very smart. Cool. Um, yeah, well, IPFS, we've done YAM. Ah, uh, the old ganache. Sweet. So I'm glad we've got a banking designation over here on the right. Our DeFi list is just getting very, very large, which is fine as it should be. Sweet, we've got Ganache now, or Truffle Suite, excuse me. Oops. And then we also wanted IPFS. Cool, that's good. We've started kind of just the, the basic bare bones of, web, of development tools, just so people know. We'll call this Web3 Development Tools, just to be specific. Sweet. IPFS for Web3 Business. Oh, yeah, now we've got a bunch of tokens that I don't really want to talk about, like OKB and LEO token and NEM. Oof. What else? Ethereum Classic. Um, is Ethereum Classic worth it? Yeah, we'll put, we'll add it on there. I did BTC TC Cash. Who else in the top fifty that I'm kind of nervous about? Waves. No idea what Waves does. OMG Network. Kind of forgot about them. Paxo Standards. Um, Ontology. I guess we Dogecoin under a currency. Dogecoin's literally just. Here's a currency. Yeah, now we're getting into basic attention token. I guess we should have a browser section even though. Digibyte, I'm skipping. I'm not, not mapping Digibyte. Just not doing it. Someone give me a reason to map Digibyte and I will. HUSD uh, decree. That's another one. Garcia. Qtum, uh, um, Algorand, that's enough tabs open. Now let's map some of these more difficult ones like an OKB, oh, great, OKB is just an exchange-based token, wonderful. We can go and slap that in the exchange tokens really easy. Okay, if you said if you're mapping ETC, which gets 51% attacked every two weeks, DGB seems okay to add. Sounds good. I think we keep out ETC then. I didn't realize um, the gravity to to which they get attacked. 
Do we have an e-commerce section? Not yet. We don't have an e-commerce section. Um, we should. That's probably what I'm envisioning, envisioning Web 3.0 being, just because we don't have a lot of retail crypto solutions at the moment. But I think it's probably smart to, to break that out because I think we will we'll have a lot of different designations of what we can spend our cryptos on in the future. Cool. So we got to OKB. I'll throw e-commerce up here at the top just as a reminder. And then we can start adding that if we find some very e-commerce specific organizations within crypto. So it's all e-commerce. Um, I'm thinking more retail there. The Leo token. Oh, the, I didn't know the Leo token was for Bitfinex. Great. So another easy one, another exchange-based token. Good. Um. There we go. Yep. Great. So that's Bitfinex. Cool. So we got another ex exchange token. Um, I'm out on exchange tokens personally. My personal opinion on exchange tokens, besides the BNB token, uh, Binance could take over the world, metaphorically speaking. So I'm bullish Binance coin, even though it's pretty, I wouldn't say it's overvalued now, but it, it does have a high valuation, uh, but I'm still bullish on them. Cool, let's add, don't know where else to put NEM. Who is building on NEM? I kind of want to not even include them. Let me just quickly double check that this is a smart contract platform. Health and success of the ecosystem. Yep. Um, now they've got some nice maps too. Look at this. They got nothing on our map. Look at this. They've done their own little maps as of June 2020. Their partners in Asia, or they do it by geography. We could also break off. Hey, morning BIOS. We could also break up our tokens by community, or excuse me, by geography. We've got energy web token up here on the in the energy section. If I zoom out real quick. There it is, top right hand corner. And we do have our energy web token. Unless people are passionate, I'm gonna skip NEM. It's one of these tokens that pretty much just says that we're on exchanges and that's about it, and that we have projects. They do have projects. I don't know any of those names. And they have associations. I'm sure they have partnerships. Ocean Protocol, we got Ocean under data. Where's data? Actually, excuse me, let me get this back over here. There's data next to supply chain. We've also got DAG for our data selection. So what was I talking about? NEM, we're gonna skip NEM. I'm over NEM. Uh, Ethereum Classic, 51% attacked. We're going to skip that one. Waves. Waves is a smart contract platform, so let's add Waves down the bottom to our list. I'm going to clean up the smart contract section later. I just don't want to bore you while making it beautiful. Awesome. Really average logo, but so be it. So there's Waves. The OMG network. What is the OMG network? Oh, me say go. Hey, BIOS, yes, you can. Um, join our Discord. Let me do this cool thing where I'm a great, look at that. I can just add the Discord link in the bottom left-hand left -hand corner like a genius. So yeah, BIOS, join our Discord. The link's in the Discord. Um, you can actually help me build this map if you want to. I need help designing, I need help categorizing, and we're gonna build the best map in DeFi. Or, excuse me, in crypto. Here's the oh, me say go network. I think this is layer two. There we go, Ethereum scaling, awesome. 
cool. So I know what Amise Go is. Where is our scalability section? Awesome. Now, as you can see, we've got scalability for both. I've got an infrastructure tag here that I'm going to struggle to use, but we're going to keep it. Cool. So Amise Go, um, we've got for scalability. Great. Yes, thank you, Cave. Discord's also in the description because I don't think that little restream link on the screen is clickable. Cool. Let me say go. There we go. Ethereum scaling. Ontology, another smart contract platform that could be a ghost chain. Let's add it for now. But you and I, come 2021, we are going to be far more, we're going to scrutinize these smart contract platforms. But we should have some patience. Um, valuation creation takes time. They're not solving easy, easy problems. So cool, ontologies there as well. Dogecoin, let's add Dogecoin in here. Doesn't have a lot of commercial use for us, but it has played a large, it's created, it's played a large role in cryptocurrencies. Oh, Jay Young, if if this became the map, that's pretty much what we're gonna we're gonna act like. We're gonna act like it's the map, and then everybody else is gonna act like it's the map too. Pretty much, we're gonna come up with this very pompous name, being like, "This is the official crypto map" or something like that. But hopefully, um plan is we'll get a good map going and then we'll make it easy to update quarterly. Where would we be without the Dogecoin memes? Um, oh, browser tokens. I don't even know if I want to get into browser tokens. Let me look back at um, our inspiration. Give me one second. Um, I just want to pull up our chain tech stack document um, to see what they listed for browser tokens. I don't think there's that many anymore that we need our its own listing. They did. They had browsers for Brave, MetaLife, and Blockstack. All right, we're out on Bat at the moment. Actually, we'll throw Bat under Web 3.0 business. Eh. Now we'll hold off on bat unless anybody still feels strongly. And I don't. Decreed. What is decreed? And what is Qtum? Of course, Qtum's a smart contract platform, probably. Yes, ESD is in the rebase section. I think I put our re where's our rebase coins? Or actually, no, excuse me. Um, there it is. I believe that's um, empty set dollar right there in the next to yam and based. Okay, so back down to layer one. Um, Qtum is defining the blockchain economy. They're having a stackathon, stackathon, which is funny. Open source public blockchain platform leveraging UTXO. Includes EVM, point of stake, uh, proof of stake. Interesting. Um, no idea what QTIM is. Yeah, I'll probably add that to the questionable list. And then Decreed is a community directed superior store of values. So this does look like a currency. Cool. We'll add it. I'm not a not the biggest fan of Decreed, but we'll add it for now. Under currencies. Eh, Qtum, you look like a layer two solution. Cool. So under current blockchains, um, we'll also add Decreed. 
because they're trying to be a currency. Decreed might be one of these ones we remove pretty quickly though. Great. Cool, we've got a pretty good looking map now. Layer one through layer four, it's all pretty organized. We added a bunch of organizations today. Um, I need to add links to all of these. What else? And then it's just really kind of design, making it look really beautiful. Let's actually see how it looks if we print it just for fun. It's really hard to work on this map while live streaming, actually, because um, it's so bloody laggy. Cool, so let's see what our little crypto map looks like. There it is. Excuse me one second. Boom. So our crypto map looks so far. It's not bad. It's not too shabby at all. We'll make all the letters. We'll make all of the words really, really large. Um, we'll make sure all of these symbols are similar size. I don't know if anybody wants words for all of the symbols. Um, probably what's really, what's, what's the best is when you get the logos that have, you know, logo with name right next to it, you know, logo name for Bancor, for Ethereum, you have logo name. That's really what I want to find. But for now, we just got the logos. This is looking really good. We're going to make this look good, make it far more reader friendly. And yeah, it's just whether I do this online or offline and anybody that wants to help, thank you very much. What else? Let's see if there's any other in the in the 200s. Actually, let's go to the 300s. Um, let's go to page three. We'll go from coin 201 to 300. Let's run through them really quickly and see if we know any names um, that stand out to us that are solid tokens that, really, that, really, that are really small. I've heard of Aon or A-I-O-N. Um, also Harvest Finance we have. I don't have Aon on there, actually. So let's have a look at Aon. This will be good. This will be a little, uh, little altcoin pick in here. Harvest Finance, I have Fetch AI, I have DIA, we have Hyperion, I've heard of for a long time. And also Voyager Token, I've heard of. Oh gosh, there's a lot of really average ones down here. Oh, there's our DeFi Pulse Index and our Axie Infinity, so I'm going to link those up. Cool, that's probably, you know what, I'm probably going to, Take a break now. Here is our crypto map. Give me give it, give it one second while it loads. And I'm probably going to clean this up today. Hopefully it looks a lot better by the end of today. But here's our map. I think it's looking pretty good so far. So we've got a lot of organizations here. It's going to, we're going to clean it up, link everything. Um, and I think we should have one of the best maps in crypto. Hey, Forrest, in, um, in the maps page on Discord, so let me do my cool little thing. On Discord, go to the maps page. I'll drop in the link, um, and that's where the link will the, to the map will be. Um, don't go crazy with editing unless just, yeah. Actually, go crazy with editing. Let's, let's just add as many as we can here. So thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, let me just finish up here by checking Bitcoin. I want to see where we are. Let's, see, let's check Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, check some of, some of the coins that are in my portfolio view. Oops. Bitcoin sitting at 17.8. Uh, Ethereum's at 473. If we have a look at my portfolio view, highly recommend using the star function or the star feature in CoinGecko. Uh, 
So just store your favorite coins, then your little portfolio of you kind of tracks all the ones you want to watch. Let's have a look at the last 24 hours for coins that I'm watching. Ooh, pretty rough 24 hours. Hours. I've got about 40 or 50 coins here that we've only got a few that are positive. VIDT data link and also Oregon Trail and Wire and Wire is probably our best performer in the last 24 hours. It looks like we've got a bunch of a bunch of coins that are down or greater than 5% um, within the last 24 hours, which kind of makes sense. We did have a nice bull run towards the end of last week and over the weekend. There it is. Nexo crypto banking account. Well, this has been good. I think we made a lot of good progress here on our map. Um, where's our working? Where's our working progress? Or our working product? Here it is. Here's our working product as of now. Layer four down to layer one, and actually that's not even close to all of it. So, thank you everyone for joining. Um, join the Discord and participate. And we'll get this crypto map finished together. And we'll be back on tomorrow, either either doing some more crypto mapping or looking at news and checking up on the news of crypto, or maybe maybe do both. Um, but thank you all for joining. Had a good morning. Happy Wednesday, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.